Are the crypto investment floodgates actually opening or are we getting faked out? Stay tuned. And welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hit that subscribe button, click all of the controls that you see down below this video, every click counts, appreciate you being here live. Without further ado, let's take a look at the, the fear and greed index, current score of 20, got here live so I could refresh this page, rather got this just after the update, so I can refresh the page and show you the current actual of 25, just want you to be aware that the crypto fear and greed index is updated every uh, every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time or Los Angeles time. Love being able to update that right as I record this video. It's a pretty big deal. I kind of missed this from the, the evening publishing time that I was doing before. So here we are doing it again. I view this as a little bit of a counter indicator typically, but we're already starting to see a bit of a reversal in sentiment and a reversal in price. Generally speaking, they're correlated. And that's why I like to take a look at this before we take a look at any of our charts. Just a quick disclaimer. None of what I talk about on the show is intended to be legal, financial, or business advice. You haven't retained my services as a consultant, and I don't have the credentials to give you financial advisement. So that wouldn't be a good fit if that's what you came here for. Just giving you the disclaimer because, guys, those are the rules. I don't make them. But what I do like to do is educate about cryptocurrencies and the broader market, take a look at fundamentals, and then occasionally look at various gems and uh, try to find projects that weren't on my radar before. So if you know of projects like that, please do give them my contact information. It's always available on the channel. But now you've been disclaimed, we can talk about it a little more freely. Thanks for playing the game with me, guys. It's just, just part of it, part of publishing on YouTube. But why is it recovering a little bit? Well, you guessed it. It's because very likely in part because of that recovery candle here, the green candle brings up to about $40,000 on Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin's chart right now. This is the one day chart over on tradingview.com. These are free tools that anybody can use. I'm using the free version of this. So all the only indicators that I have on this chart are indicators that you could get for free over on tradingview, uh, tradingview.com. These are tools that are available for anyone. And uh, they also have education to go with it. The MACD or the moving average convergence divergence is showing us that we are still in a divergent position towards the bearish side, right? So that hasn't flipped to the other direction just yet. And we see that the volume candles for each day, it's a very, very healthy volume behind that recovery candle here. Um, this is that dollar cost average range, that value average range that I've been talking about for months. I'm very comfortable with, but would be perfectly comfortable earning in Bitcoin right now, selling products on the mineyour.biz website in Bitcoin right now. As a quick shameless call out, you see at below myself, phone.myb.lol. I have a couple of devices that are actually going out right now. Um, based on orders internationally for this device, a uh, privacy hardened Android phone that I use personally every single day. It is my daily driver, um, but I, that's available for purchase with cryptocurrencies. And I have no problem accepting Bitcoin at these ranges right now and then holding it if that's what I had to do. If that came in, I'd have no problem with it. But uh, Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Wonderful himself, has said that the investment floodgates are opening, and I want to I want to investigate that. I wonder if there's any merit to that. Don't feel the need to uh, to correct this chart just yet, or the chopsticks on this chart just yet. Just no reason yet. We haven't gotten out of that that trend, that downward trend. If anything, it's steepened, right? But I don't think we're. It's time to re, uh, reposition those chopsticks just yet. But here it is. Kevin O'Leary says a massive wall of money is coming. Thank you to the Daily Hodel staff over at dailyhodl.com for this article. And he says that a wave of money is coming. He was on Kitco News, interviewed, and, they, uh, and his quote is, it may not be perfect, but the reason that you would care, I think as a retail investor, about VC and institutional money coming in and why you'd want Senator Cynthia Loomis to be successful in getting this regulation passed in the state of Wyoming is that the institutional capital is like a giant dam, a wall of money that can't invest yet. So it's a spigot of capital in the trillions of dollars. Not a dime of it has been put into crypto yet. Can you imagine what would happen to asset values if they started to allocate? That's the investment here. And, you know, I, I kind of need to walk back my commentary from yesterday. I think that he's right, that there is a positive effect. It is a rising tide for the cryptocurrency and blockchain industries when we do see that institutional money come in. But I don't think that it's going to be the right play for every single cryptocurrency project out there. I don't think that every single NFT project, for example, or every single blockchain project has to have VC capital or, uh, or angel capital. 
uh, to succeed. But in order for the prices to continue to rise, he's absolutely right. We do need more fresh capital flowing into these markets. It can't just be those who are already insiders continuing to see growth coming from nowhere, right? The the cash has to be flown, uh, has to flow in from somewhere. So he's he's probably right. There probably do need to be funds and that probably does require some regulation, but I don't think that's the right choice for every single project. And I do think there need to be decentralized and private off ramps as well as decentralized and private use cases in the same way that in traditional currencies, we have cash, right? So cash is king in the real world. So what happens when we go to purely digital currencies? We need the cash equivalent in digital format. Things like Monero, things like Tornado Cash for Ethereum and EVM-like systems, and Lava Cash if it ever launches for Solana. I've basically given up on that. But EVM style systems, it's simple, right? We've got basically the uh, the equivalent of ZK uh, of Zcash, right? ZK Snarks on any EVM chain, right? Ethereum, Polygon, Avalanche, Phantom, you name it. It's already got it. It's already got the same level of privacy, if not greater, than Zcash. So I think we need that in this new economy. You tell me what you think down in the comment section, though. Also, the second article that I wanted to talk to you about today is at the New York Post. Here we are, mainstream, right? Mainstream saying, uh, covering the news that we talked about the other day from Facebook. You can sell items in the metaverse, but meta will keep nearly a 50% cut. Ouch. Talked about it before. Keep your friends close. Keep Facebook, now meta, even closer. Because clearly, they're not out looking, uh, looking out for your interests at all. This is very clearly more of the same, right? The ad revenue that comes from the ad programs, having the Facebook tracking pixel model that they had in years past, it was a great thing for Main Street America to be able to get uh, very detailed user data and to be able to use that for the small to mid-scale business, small, small to mid-sized business. Mom and pop businesses were benefiting from what Facebook offered in the Facebook ad marketplace. Their ecosystem of having a Facebook pixel, being able to track user data, being able to leverage that user and uh, and consumer data for those businesses. But here we are in the midst of Web3, right? So-called Web3, and Facebook is pretending to participate in Web3 when really it's just more of the same, Web 2.5 at best. Um, so Meta is engaged in just more of the same, right? More of the same. Gonna keep a 50% cut, only certain people can use it anyway, only certain people can buy anyway, and it's kind of moving towards the accredited investor uh, ecosystem that we've had before. So I don't think there's a whole lot to see there. But you tell me what you think. Are you excited about Meta? Are you excited about the Metaverse that that uh, Facebook has envisioned? Do you think that their Horizon system, right, their, their, their Horizon Metaverse, that that is going to be of any real effect in the cryptocurrency and blockchain ecosystem? Or is it going to be another Libra? Because I, I know where my money is, and it's, it's not there. But you tell me what you think down in the comments section. You may know better than me about that. I'd love to hear it, guys. You're out of control, and I'm here for it. Quick word on GPU mining profitability. It's back up from the last time that we took a look at it. Just a little bit. That 3090 Ti is printing, uh, doing about $4.22 every single day. Really, really briefly want to look at eBay.com. I'm going to do this live. Don't always do this. But the RTX 3090 Ti, um, it's first off going to be a little bit more difficult to find right now in just doing a simple search like this. But we are looking at much closer pricing to, re to, to MSRP than we we saw just even just a few weeks ago, right? So make sure that we get this all the way filtered to something that's relevant, sold items. And there you are, the RTX 3090, just by itself, selling for less than $2,000, 3090 Ti, where you do see them sold, selling for much closer to MSRP. So it looks like, yeah, nature is healing. There it is, the 3090 Ti FE Founders Edition. A lot harder to find. It's out of stock over on, uh, over on NVIDIA's website. And then, yeah, you get the other Founders Editions, which are also sold out on NVIDIA's website. But the Diego Tufts Gaming 3090 Ti, that's basically MSRP essentially MSRP, and it's sold for MSRP. So great to see that prices are recovering there. Am I going to walk back my prediction that prices may go up? No, I don't think I'm going to do that. I really don't. I think that there's a strong possibility that prices will go up again, and that we should be aware that prices could go up again. I have nothing to sell you there. So just be aware. I'm mentioning that for your own benefit. But prices are up. Our prices are, are right-sizing, and profit is going up for GPU mining on the high end anyway. Our portfolio for GPU mining coins is also looking okay, but over the last seven days, a lot of these coins have had the wind taken out of their sails. 
Etho Protocol, the biggest loser over the last seven days. Mimble Wimblecoin somehow still on the list. Conceal and Haven also kind of taking a big hit. Uh, but Haven, of course, just correcting after a, a relatively fast run up. Ravencoin also almost 20 points down, 20% down. Flux, Safecoin, Fero, etc. A lot of really great coins that have relatively strong fundamentals taking a hit. Ton token up. <laughs> Matic, in, uh, Matic Ave interest bearing wrapped. ETH up. Ryo currency up. But one of those are the few coins that are up. What am I saying? The GPU mining ain't dead yet. It's not done yet. But I do fear that those prices are going to come back up. So just be aware if you were in the market for an MSRP, sort of roughly MSRP priced GPU with the current rate of inflation of all other goods and services. This is, I think we're reaching the inflection point of where your price to acquire a new GPU is is about as good as it's going to get. Um, let's not wait for inflation to catch up to these GPUs. All right, guys, thanks for watching all the way to the end. Tell me, do you think that this is true? Do you think Mr. Wonderful has got it right? Or um, can we do this on our own? All right, guys, thanks for watching to the end. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. Remember to check out mineyour.biz where you can sign up for Mine Your Biz Insiders, our occasional newsletter where we don't spam you, but we do send out occasional important information, including flash sales and important deals on privacy preserving technology. This is one of the ways that we can talk to you without censorship and without the oversight of third party media platforms. You can also check out the new Mine Your Biz phone as well as merch or sign up to become an affiliate for anything sold directly on the mineyour.biz website. You can earn a percentage of anything that we sell. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. You're the reason I make this media. I love your face. Remember to stay private and mine your biz.